Any question and I'll try my level best to reply. Yes, brother, name and profession. Okay, uh, my name is Anshul Bakshi. Uh, I'm from India and uh, right now I'm uh, working as a, I'm part of a uh, talent acquisition team in an organization right now and I'm part of a research team within the talent acquisition team, recruitment per se. And I'm very thankful that I've been given chance to ask a question to uh, great Mr. Zakir Naik. I'm a little nervous as well. Uh, uh, my question uh, has not to do anything like uh, directly related to the religion, but uh, I just want to ask this question has been asked to you earlier also because I have seen few of your videos and uh, one of the persons also asked and I had exactly the same question, but I was not pretty much convinced with the answer that you gave. So this time around I am expecting that I would be getting a, a, a more satisfactory answer. Uh, like uh, I just want to ask that why God created this universe? That is the question that I have. Uh, you had given the answers like it was like I, like I say that why has God created human being? And you answered that it was the human being at that point of time who chose to be a human being, whether in whatever form a human being was at that point of time, whether he was a soul or a, or a devil or or an angel, uh, he was given the choice that at that point of time to become a human being. My question is that if he had not created me in any of the forms millions of years back, the question of me given the choice of becoming a human being or for anything for that matter would not have arise. Now, like when it comes to the basics, suppose if I am not getting the answer of this question, let's suppose, still I know the basics of being a human being, what is good, what is bad, where I am wrong, where I have to really work on my limitations and I can, I know 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. My question is that why were the numbers created? That is the question. Like, like I, if I can give one more example, you come from India itself, you know that couple of years back in 2012 on 16 December in the night, a girl was, was raped in a, in a public bus in Delhi and after that she was like destroyed by four or five devils on that night and it, that was something I was really very shocked and that really horrified the entire nation. I'm, I, I, where was God that, at that point of time? That, that, that is the question that came into my mind. Now. Even if there was some sort of a purpose of God behind that particular incident, like that purpose could have solved through some other medium also. Why that much of pain? Why that much of pain? Brother, Thank I you. request you that if you can make the answer simple, you have given a short speech. <laughs> I can reply to all your points, but that will take a long time. I would like to know what is your main question, main one or two questions. Do you want to know about rape? Do you want to know about creation? Do you know human being? What do you want to know? I want to if know. If you ask about 20 questions together, ask one question at a time. I will try and reply that no problem. Otherwise, if you're asking, now in your short speech, I could at least gather 10 questions. Right? Now okay. For me to answer all these 10 questions would take more than an hour. And I think giving one hour to one person would not be just. No, so my main question so you is... you ask that... me basic yeah. question, don't give an answer I gave you earlier. You, you asked me the question, you gave my answers also, then you asked a new question, then you asked <laughs> about rape, then you asked what was God doing at that time. So what do you want to know? Uh, ask me one question, two questions, I'll reply. So I would like to know that... What was why, God doing when they were raped? Why, no, why God uh, uh, created this universe? What was the main purpose behind it? Yes. Finish. Simple question, I give an answer. Yes, the answer is wrong. Brother asked a question. What's the name, brother, you said? Anshul. Anshul. A-N-S-H-U-L. Anshun. Anshun asked a good question that what was the purpose of God creating the universe? Now while giving the answer, he gave the purpose of creation of human being. So you are asking the question, you are giving the answer of human being and you are jumbling everything, it would be difficult. I have given many answers and you have heard many of them I believe, but you are mixing most of them. What is the purpose of creation? I have given a talk on this, what is the purpose of creation? This is a full talk of mine. And I gave a talk on what is the purpose of life. Many things are overlapping. As far as the creation, what is the purpose of creation? God is the creator. If he is the creator, he has to create. What is the purpose of each creation? Each creation differs. The creation, the purpose of each creation differs. The purpose of creation of animals is different than the purpose of creation of human beings. Every, but as a whole, as a whole, all the creations that Almighty God created, He is the creator. 
He is the creator. Now, creator are of two, three different types. One creator is one who creates something from something which even you and I can do. We can take wood, we can chop the tree, make the wood, make it into a table. So you and I also are creator, but we are limited creators. But one creator is who can create something from nothing that only God can do. So God is the creator who can create something from nothing. Like how did the creation of the universe come? The Quran says in Surah Anbiya chapter number 21 verse number 30 that Awalam Yiralladina Kafuru Do not the unbelievers see Anna samawati wal ardha Kaana tarat kan fudak nauma That the heaven and the earth were joined together and we clove them asunder He's talking about the creation, how did he create? Now people are doing research whether it's right or wrong, how did it come? Some are coming to part truth but not total truth Now regarding the purpose If you want to know what is the purpose of the creation of the human beings the universe in itself, human being is part of universe basically. So the universe in itself, what is the main purpose of this universe being created basically? The purpose of the universe is for the creation of the creation of Allah to, to live in this universe. But what why? Is the why then each creation has a different reason. So if you want to know, yes, one of the best creations of Almighty God is the human beings. One of the best creations of Almighty God, the best of molds is... It is a human being. And the purpose of the creation of the human beings is mentioned in Surah Daryat, chapter number 51, verse number 56. Allah says that Wama Jinnah, that Allah has created the jinnah and the men not but to worship him. Wama jinnah wa insa illa li that Almighty God has created the jinn and the men not but to worship him. And most of the creation, whether you the animals, the birds, the other living creatures. All the other living creatures have already submitted the will to Almighty God. As far as the creation of the human being is concerned, unlike the other creations, the other creations, they don't have a free will of their own. Except for jinn and men. All the other creations of Almighty God, they don't have a free will. For example, we create a computer. Correct? Yeah. Does the computer have the free will? No. I mean, Whatever we program, they, true. they do. If you program them to do addition subscription, they'll do it. If you program them to do multiplication, they'll do it. If you pro so, if you make a computer, it is something unique, something good, but it doesn't have a free will. So amongst all these creations, the uniqueness of the human being and jinn is that the human beings have a free will of their own. And in their free will, the purpose is they want to test that which of the people Almighty God who has given free will follow the commandment of Almighty God. If you follow the commandment, like computer follows the commandment, what you say, nothing great because it is programmed. Now Almighty God gave a, gave a free will to the human beings that it can either obey or disobey Almighty God. If you obey Almighty God, you become superior to the angels. The angels don't have a free will but they always obey Almighty God. So, so a creation which doesn't have a free will and always obeys God is a good creation but not the ultimate creation. The human beings have a free will, they can either obey or disobey Almighty God. Now once the free will has been given and then you obey Almighty God, you become higher than the angels. After the free will is given, if you disobey, then you become low. So the choice is given as you told in my earlier answer, which you heard when I had given, I think one year back in Dubai, that when a person asked me, that you know, why did I become a human being? So I told that the Quran says that we were the people who chose. Because you should not object to Allah that why did he make me a human being? Why didn't he make me an animal? So Almighty God says that the choice was given to the human being. And the Quran says we were fools who opted to be human beings. If we didn't opt to be human beings, we would just be like normal Muslims obey and submit to the will of God. Now here when the option is given, if you take the option of undergoing the examination and if you pass the examination, you get distinction. You become higher than the angels. If you fail, then you become low. So we human beings were the fool who opted to undergo the examination. Now you will say, I don't remember. I say, I don't remember. No, but I, I would like to say that if he had not created me, I would have not like chosen anything. If you wouldn't have created you, you'd have been like an animal which has no free will. No, I'm, to saying, I'm showing not even animal for that matter. Okay, let's, 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 uh, let's, I accept the fact that now I have been created. 
just last one question that I have is that why why then so much of pain? Like whatever may be the purpose of God to create, why is it only through the way of pain that I'm my that purpose is getting sorted? It could be into through some other situation, through some other way, but it should not brother, be pain. The brother has asked a very good question that why is it so much of pain that I'm undergoing this test True. by the pain? True. It is like you asking me that if I have to pass the medical examination, I have to slog, I have to I have to stay awake, hardly sleep for two, three hours a day. Why I have to study so many books if I have to become a doctor? Okay, see, huh? uh, I can understand that. The thing is that... Let me I'm complete. A... Okay, sure. So if I have to pass a test, and I have to sacrifice. If you say that I want to pass the test without sacrificing, where is the test? It is like two plus is equal to five. That's not a test for me. That's what kids play. Now, if you're undergoing a test, but naturally the test is to test whether you can really take these things or not. And if you undergo pain, for example, if I tell you that, brother, I will give you pain only for two seconds. How many? Two seconds. And after that, whatever you want in the world, I'll give you. Whatever. You want a mountain of gold, I'll give you. You want your pain to dissipate, I'll give you. Would you agree to take that two per... Two seconds pain or not? As would. a logical person. I would, certainly I would. Surely. Yep. Now I am telling this life that you are leading in this world is for approximately 50 to 60 years. Some people die at the age of 20, some at the age of 50, some at the age of 90. Average say 50, 60 years, correct? Now this life compared to the eternal life is less than two seconds of your life. <coughs> correct? So yeah. now when you are agreeing as a logical person, two seconds I will take whatever pain I will bear it. Or even if I have to die, I would say again I'm back to life. Correct? So if you compare in your life of 50 years, 2 seconds, what is to 50 years, your full 50 years is less than 2 seconds of your eternal life. So when you're agreeing logically to bear any pain whatsoever for 2 seconds, so that you can ask what do you want in this world, same thing if I tell this 50 years of your average life is less than 2 seconds of your eternal life. So if you have to undergo pain, for example, somebody raped that woman. Nowhere does the Quran say that a woman is raped, she'll go to hell. If she was a good lady, and if she was not the cause of the rape, and if somebody troubled her, she may go to Jannah. So the pain, so if someone says that if the girl is raped, yeah, she may be looked down upon, in the year after she'll go to Jannah. Nowhere does it say, ah, the people who rape, they will go to hellfire. The people who raped, they enjoyed for maybe half an hour, one or two hours, they will burn in hell forever. This is the justice of God. If God wanted, you could have prevented that rape. It's very easy for him. Yes, that's Not my point. Not that God, but if God keeps on preventing, for an examination is going, the teacher has taught in the classroom. Now during the examination, the teacher is supervising, and the student is adding 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. The teacher can say, hey boy, don't write 5, write 4. But if the teacher objects, won't the others object? If the teacher tells him that don't write 2 plus 2 is equal to 5, write 4, then the other students will object. Why is the teacher interfering in the test? If God wants, he can easily prevent the rape. It's easy for him, kun for kun. But he lets it happen. And the person who has caused, caused the pain, he will punish him. And the person who just will put him to heaven. So this is the justice of Almighty God. All undergo, for example, you may be the brother of the woman who is raped. You may be the son. What is your role? Do you yet have faith in Almighty God? God's going to test you. So all this is the test for the person who's raped, for the person who's raping, for the relatives of the person who's raped. God wants, he can easily stop it. That doesn't mean God doesn't exist. God is letting it happen. He does not interfere in the free will, but based on the actions you do, what he has taught you, good, bad, what is good, what is wrong, what is right. On the day of judgment, he will be just, and see to it, he will give reward to those who deserve it. He will give punishment to those who deserve it. Okay, like you said about the test. Okay, human beings have limitations. And we as a teachers or maybe like our teachers would have created those tests because they, were, have, they have the limited knowledge and through that limited knowledge, they want to play with that limited knowledge and make sure that our children or like our juniors are becoming better human beings. God does not have any limitation. So he does not need to uh, uh, like set any sort of, sort of a test for a human being to pass or fail, to go in hell or heaven. 
God has got unlimited powers. It's human being who has limitations and that is why it has created a way. Human being has created a way to become a better human being and to pass on those teachings that he would have got, learned from his ancestors or maybe by reading the, 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 the Quran or the Bible or whatever. But God is, has got unlimited power. It does not require to set any sort of a test for human being for anyone to pass or fail or to go into hell or heaven. He can do it without even setting that set or by like without even making the human being going through that pain. Very good. Brother asked a very good question that teachers have limited power, limited knowledge, God has unlimited power. Without undergoing the test, he can tell this person deserves hell, this person deserves heaven. Correct brother? He is all powerful, he is all knowing. Absolutely. Even without the test, he can tell this person will go to hell. This is correct? He can, I mean, he, he knows can, the end of it. Very good, very good. Now, imagine, suppose the teacher. Now teacher before the examination predicts that this person will come out first class first, this person will get second class, this person will fail. And, and the person undergoes the test, he comes out first class first, he gets second class, he fails. Why but, not everyone goes to heaven, I'm saying? Let me complete. No? <laughs> I'm sorry. If everyone goes to hell... Heaven, the, heaven, I'm saying heaven. If heaven. everyone goes to heaven, then where is the test? If you want to become medical, like everyone who passes the medical examination teacher will pass then these doctors will, instead of treating the patients, will start killing the patients. <laughs> oh, teacher is so kind. Everyone who gave the medical examination, she has passed. She has passed, but the person cannot treat the patient. Instead of treating, he will kill him. Who's to blame then the teacher? So the main thing the human beings have been created is that after giving a free will, do you follow the commandment or not? If Allah is going to put everyone in the heaven, then where is the different creation? It is like angels. As far as the angels are concerned, they can never disobey God. So what is the difference between the creation of the angels and human beings? The creation itself is different that after giving a free will, you obey Allah's commandment. Now coming to your main question, why doesn't God put directly into heaven and hell? If suppose God puts someone in heaven directly, he will not object. But someone he puts in hell directly, he will say that why did you put in hell? What mistake did I do? That's the reason the Quran says in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse 58, that on the day of judgment, even those who will be put to hell, the non-believers, will not object to the justice of Allah. They will say, give me one more chance. Allah will say, it's too late. The Quran says, those who will be put to hell will never object to Allah. Why are you putting me hell? They will agree that they deserve hell. They will tell, oh my God, give me one more chance. Allah said, I gave you enough chance in this world. Then the test is over. That is the beauty of Almighty God, that if He put you directly into hell, you would object. What did I do? No, you were going to kill. Where did I kill? Okay, now you undergo the full thing. Same thing, the, the, the devil, Iblis, the Satan, he challenged Almighty God, that give me a little place in the heart of the human being, I will deviate him. So Almighty God says, all those who are my followers, you will never be able to deviate. Those who are not my followers, you will be able to deviate. So this is the test. So here we undergo the test so that on the day of judgment, that's what Almighty God says, your organs will be witness to you. Your hand, your mouth, your organ, your heart. So that when Allah shows, it will be so crystal clear that no one will be bothered about what's happening to others, he'll only be bothered about himself. It will be so clear. Not a single person who will be put to hell will object to Almighty God. Because it will be so crystal clear. You made this mistake, you deserve hell. He will only request that give me one more chance, Allah will say it's too late. Because if he has to give him one more chance, he'll have to get the good people also again. Na? What will the bad person come in the world and do alone? So this is Allah's plan, this is Allah's test. So we human beings we have been giving the free will. We are one of the highest of his creation. Now in this creation, God Almighty has told us what is good, what is bad. And I do agree with you. We may have to undergo pain. But if you realize, you will not mind it. Like how when I told you two seconds, you said no problem. Same way if you understand that there's something life after death, there's something like heaven, you will never tell Allah, this is nothing. If I have to crib, I'll have to crib. Oh, I'm traveling so many thousands of miles. I'm giving lecture. I'm sleeping only for three hours. I say, nothing I've done and God is giving me so much. I'm getting three hours sleep and no problem at all. So many people are listening. All this is hard. I'm in Fadl Rabbi. So if you understand Almighty God, you will thank Him that what you are giving me, I don't even deserve 0.000000000. When will the one come? I don't know. 
if you know God if you don't understand you will think that life is hell so that's the reason a believer always thanks Almighty God and if you understand the purpose of life then you see how good it is to help others how it is to convey the message of Almighty God and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us hope that answers the question brother. okay just just last thing then I'm done uh, like I don't get this opportunity again and again now uh, if a person follows like uh, follows Islam blindly a person follows Hinduism blindly a person follows Christianism blind, blindly you know without knowing what is happening in the other religion he's following whatever is written in, in his uh, holy book uh, will all these three people four people following different religions properly like st sticking to their own religions will 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 reach uh, heaven like like to, to the right place or only the people who follow Islam would be would be reaching the right place that's my final question thank very you very good question and a very important question the brother asked a very important question that a Hindu follows his Hindu scriptures the Christian follows his scripture, the Muslim follows his scripture, will all go to heaven, only those following Islam will go to heaven. Only those following and who submit their will to God will go to heaven. Forget what the name is. Quran says in Surah Imran chapter 3 verse number 19, Inna dina in the la islam the only religion acceptable in the sight of, in the sight of Almighty God is submit your will to God. Now in Arabic we say Islam, but the real translation is those who submit the will to Almighty God. Now, I have a simple solution. I have a simple practical solution which no one should mind. I ask these religious communities or religious people, agree that one scripture is 100% the word of God. You said, you know, the Hindus follow their scripture. So the Hindu will say, I don't mind agreeing Veda to be 100% the word of God. The Christian would say, I wouldn't mind believing Bible to be the word of God. The Muslim will say, I don't mind believing Quran to be the word of God. My simple request is, let us agree to follow what is common in all these, these three scriptures. What is different, we'll discuss tomorrow. Whether right or wrong, we'll discuss tomorrow. Let us agree today to follow what is common in all these, these scriptures. Now, when you do a comparative study, we come to know all the religious scriptures say we believe in one God. All the religious scriptures say don't do idol worship. Yet the Hindus do idol worship. Yet the Christians worship Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, as God. I told you earlier, there is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says that he's God or he says worship me. So if you believe in the Bible, point out to me one unequivocal statement, one unambiguous statement where Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says that he's God or he says worship me. They cannot. Saying to the Hindu scriptures, it clearly says idol worship is wrong. If you read the Hindu scripture, Sveta Sveta Upanishad, chapter number 4, number 19, Yajurve chapter 3, verse number 3, it says, Na tasse prati masti. Of that God, there is no pratima, no image, no photograph, no painting, no sculpture, no idol. So all the scripture says, God is one. Ikkam evidityam, God is only one without a second. So let us agree, all people to follow what is common, God is one. But then, the intent is right of a, of a person, of a human being, even if he's having an idol, like if he's having no, no, some no, statue. No, 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 you, I'm trying to tell you that all of us has to believe that one scripture is 100% the word of God, whether right or wrong. Oh, Hindu believes that the Veda is the word of God. Now, when he's saying Veda is the word of God, why is he following the Pandit? So when you want to follow religion, follow the religious scripture. If the Pandit is saying what is correct in the Veda, you follow. If the Pandit is saying what is not mentioned in the Veda, then why are you following the Pandit? So what we human beings have done, we have started following other human beings blindly rather than following the scripture. My only request is to all the human beings in the world, go back to your scripture. I tell the Muslim, go back to the Quran. I tell the Muslim, go back to the Sai Hadith. I tell the Hindu, go back to the Veda. You say, no, but that Swamiji said this, this Pandit said that. I said, your Pandit is misguiding you. And if I'm misguiding you, tell me, Dr. Zakir Naik, you're wrong, and I'll take back my words. I'm quoting Sanskrit quotations. I'm here to educate. I'm here to unite the human being, not to disunite. The other people that have opened up the shops. That Very if you cool. follow the scripture, the shop will close down. And that is the even in Muslims. There are some Muslims who have opened up the shop, therefore they're against me. You know, the first brother said, I found many of the people writing against you. Not only non-Muslims, even Muslims write against me. If some Muslim has opened his shop, and if I sell that, you go to the Quran, his shop will close down, he becomes my enemy. So what I'm requesting, that when you do compare this study, all scriptures agree that one God, idol worship is wrong. Let us agree, we will never do idol worship in future, we'll believe in one God. All scripture says, the last and final messengers, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The Veda says that, 
Yeah, the Bible says that. Old Testament, New Testament, Quran says that. So let us agree to follow Prophet Muhammad as the last messenger. All the scriptures say that there is hell and heaven. All the scriptures say there is life after death. All the scriptures say that alcohol is not allowed. It's prohibited. All the scriptures say pork is prohibited. All the scriptures say you should wear the hijab. I can go on and on quoting, but the first major thing is believe in one God. Don't do idol worship. Believe that Prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger. Brother, I'd like to ask you the question. That do you believe there is one God? Yes, there is one God. Do you believe idol worship is wrong? Now as you say, I can, I can, I can believe it. I mean, if you're saying it. See, the thing is like there are so Me many things, there are so many things written. Uh, for, for everyone, it's not really possible to follow all of them. It becomes really very difficult. Even I'm if someone telling wants you, to let follow. us agree to follow what is common. The thing which is, the, if there's a Venn diagram, circle, circle, circle. Even the common things are so many actually. <laughs> common things, or at least follow the major common things. The most important pillar of all the religion is God is one and don't do idol worship. So you believe God is one? Yes. Now you believe idol worship is wrong. Do you yes. believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Yes, I do. Khalas. So that means they have entered the fold of the true religion. If you believe there is one God and you believe Prophet Muhammad, these two are the basic minimum requirement for you to enter into the religion of submitting a will to God. Whether they call Islam, whether they call Muslim. After that, slowly, slowly. I know there are many things. There is Salah, there is Zakat, there is Ajba. At least two minimum requirements for anyone to take admission in the religion of God, the religion of Islam, is believe in one God, believe he has no partners, no idol worship, and believe Prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger. Khalas. So that means according to me, you're a Muslim. <laughs> but I would not leave my own religion. I, I can be a Muslim, but I, I would no, not no, be able to... No, no, don't leave the true part of your religion. What is wrong, what you believe? What is the religion you don't know? The basic yeah, because I blindly of, follow that. See, maybe. religion means a way of life, correct? Correct, that's right. So, that's true. if I prove to you, suppose you're having alcohol, I don't know whether you're having. I don't. But if, you're very good. But suppose if you're having, and then I prove to you alcohol is wrong and bad for health, and if you leave, that means you're leaving your religion, no? <laughs> right or wrong? So what you should say, whatever wrong you prove to me in my way of life, I will leave. Certainly, certainly. If you say that I will not change, that means you're obstinate. That means you're <laughs> stubborn. Correct, no? That's right. I'm telling you, you prove to me what I'm doing is wrong, I'm willing to change. You prove to me Quran is wrong, I will not follow the Quran. I'm telling that, no? You <laughs> say I'm doing kufr. You prove to me Quran is wrong. See, Quran, many people say, that you know Zakir what he says is you know too much. Allah says in the Quran that if you prove to him that Almighty God begot a son, I would be the first person to bow down to him. Because God doesn't beget. Similarly, Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nisa chapter 4, verse 82. Do they not consider the Quran with care? Had it been from anyone besides Allah, there would have been many contradictions. So I tell you, take out a contradiction in the Quran because I'm a student of the Quran. So the, if you are so solid, what you should say that whatever is wrong in me, I will change. You should be able to say that, correct? Right. But now, basic thing to enter, you should believe there's one God. Right. And believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger. True. If you believe in these two things, you enter into the basic universal religion. Okay. So I believe that you have already entered. Yep. Yes. Would you like to say it in Arabic? Uh, how do we say it? I don't know. To say it, you have to believe there's no, there's no God but Allah. There is no God but Allah. And Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. MashaAllah. Thank you. MashaAllah. Brother? If you can say it, what you said is in English, I'll just say it in Arabic, okay. so that becomes the word of Almighty God. I'll just say it and can repeat it. Sure. And I hope no one is forcing you. No, no, no. You're doing one of your own me. free will. Certainly no, yes. Yes, very good. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu wa Rasuluhu wa Rasuluhu I bear witness Allah I bear witness witness that there is no god but Allah that there is no god but Allah and prophet Muhammad and prophet Muhammad is the messenger is the messenger and servant of Allah and servant of Allah MashaAllah welcome to the fold and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide you and come closer to the truth
and may you be a source of guidance to the other people to come to the truth. Amen. Uh, Jazakumullah khairan and uh, uh, we have a couple of ladies. Uh... So I would like to ask you sister, would you like to become a Muslim? How point of you already are a Muslim? <coughs> would you like to say it in Arabic? Yes. Or her, I will say translation. Yes. Just what you said. She understands, but just to say. Are you understanding English? I understand, but. Do you want a translation or do you understand English? I understand English. I think you understand she's thinking. I'm experienced. <laughs> 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 <laughs>